Oh, we live? Oh, all right. Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so on my videos that I've been making these past couple of days, um, I've been noticing that I have a lot of people watching uh, from the Philippines. Um, and so I thought it'd be kind of cool if I hopped on and, uh, you know, tried to speak a little bit of you guys' language for you. Because I am a language guy. Um, I'm very interested in languages and stuff. So um, I, I learned, I believe, what is Filipino. Uh, a little couple of words, a little phrase I want to say in Filipino. Um, and so it is a uh, kamusta. A king, mega kaibagan. Uh, and I'm trying to say hello, my friends there. And salamat. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel and watching my videos. All right. So let me get over here. Bam. Okay. So the game that I have before you guys right now is a game uh, between Wesley So with the white pieces and Hikaru Nakamura for, uh, with the black pieces. Now, this game is kind of for all the marbles. The whole kitten and caboodle. You know, whatever, however you want to put it. Um, and so uh, Wesley So has the ability in this game to actually become the U.S. champion. Um, he, all, he, all he needs to do is draw. That, he has to manage a draw and then he'll be good. Um, right now, uh, at, as of round 11, Jeffrey Zhang is actually one point behind Wesley So. So the only way that they would end up going into like a tiebreak situation is if Wesley So lost and Jeffrey Zhang won his game. And so... If uh, Wesley So draws this game, uh, then he becomes the new U.S. champion. All right, so if you guys are ready, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. All right, so like you guys saw a second ago, my bad, it's D4. All right, so we have knight to F6, C4. Looking like we could be going into some type of like, you know, slob or queens, you know, gambit accepted or decline type, type waters here. E6, getting us into that area here. We have knight to C3. All right, so uh, with bishop to b4, we have the Nimzo, in, uh, the Nimzo Indian, sorry, uh, classical variation. All right, queen to c2, just defending that uh, defending that uh, knight, uh, trying to see, you know, if we can just take back with the queen in this particular situation. All right, so we have castle. So if you look at black, you know, black has just rapidly developed their pieces and has got their king to safety. So, they're, you know, they're, 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 they're following, you know, great chess principles here. All right, so we have E4. You know, white just establishing that beautiful, like, gigantic pawn center. So we have these pawns controlling all of these squares here on the fifth rank. And that's definitely something you want to do. And so as black, you know, you want to try to undermine that somehow. And D5 is the perfect move to do that with. Um, it's asking a question to these two pawns on C4 and E4 uh, and trying to, you know, get it, get their own space uh, in the center of the board. Uh, so you French French defense players out there for black, uh, you know, you'll you'll recognize this structure. This is a very typical uh, French defense type of a structure for black here. All right. So we have E5, uh, you know, just trying to resolve the, the, the issue kind of there in the center of the board. All right. So we have knight to E4. All right. Bishop to D3 developing a piece and just kind of asking the knight a question like, hey, do you want to just go ahead and hang out there forever and get taken or? You know, what do we got going on? All right, so we have C5 just uh, continuously attacking the uh, the center that uh, that White has established. And so, you know, when you're playing games, guys, like, you know, when your opponent is trying to, like, take over the whole center of the board with their pawns and stuff like that, um, you have to try to undermine that as much as possible. Because if not, you're just going to get bored, constricted to death, and they're just going to push their pawns all just into your front yard and into the house and into the backyard and everything. You definitely don't want any of that stuff. All right, so we have knight to uh, f3, um, you know, defending that pawn that we have on d4. So we have c takes d4, and then knight takes d4. All right, knight to d7. And like I was telling you guys before uh, about the notation and stuff like that, because this knight doesn't have the ability to come to this square directly, you don't have to note that it was knight b to d7. You can just simply say knight to d7. Uh, so it just keeps it a little simple there. All right, so we got bishop to f4, just trying to defend that pawn we have. Uh, one of our uh, advanced pawns that's kind of in the, you know, in the throat of, uh, you know, black here. I'm defending those two squares nicely. All right, so we have queen to h4, uh, trying to get rid of that pesky bishop. And so uh, what I want you guys to do right now is, uh, for those of you that want to pause the video and kind of sit here and, you know, kind of think like, you know, what would you do in this particular situation? You know, you're the... Your bishop is attacked, it's undefended. Um, you know, queen's like right there attacking it, right? Like, bam, like just immediate, like obvious there, right? So if you guys want to pause the video real quick, uh, just take a minute to think like, you know, kind of what, what the best plan of action is as far as, you know, defending the bishop or retreating the bishop or moving it somewhere, you know, 
Um, and then you still have to remember this pawn right here. That was the whole reason that you moved the bishop in, you know, on onto f4. Um, what would be a what would be a good move for you to make here? And for those of you that want to just keep on going, uh, we'll just keep on moving here, and I'll just show you the the, the move that Wesley so actually played. Um, and now for those that pause the video and are back with us, welcome back. Now that we have everybody in the same uh, in the same room, um, let's go ahead and. Um, you know, see what was actually played. And so G3 was actually played. And I just want to back up a touch real quick. So for those of you that paused the video, um, I'm wondering if any of you guys came up with this move here, bishop to G3. Like, you know, in, in your process of thinking, you're thinking, okay, cool. Well, you know what? I did develop the bishop, you know, for it to protect this pawn. You know, like I still kind of want to keep it on there, but I mean, it's attack. Like I have to do something about it, right? All right, cool. Um, now, a move that I want you to notice that Black actually has it as, as their, at their disposal at this moment is going to be Knight takes G3. And so uh, this move is actually a problem because now, if you notice, all of the pieces moved off of this rank. And now the queen is in direct contact with this undefended knight on D4. Uh, so that's the that's the main problem here. And so, you know, of course, you would take back something like this and you have a queen here. So when I, I want to back up here and just kind of show you this visually. Now, sometimes when you're developing your pieces and you, and you, you kind of have a lot of pieces kind of, you know, lined up on the same file and rank, it's hard to calculate and imagine that there's going to be something, you know, that might come up to where, you know, one of your pieces might be in danger. So, f like right now, I mean, you know, you have so much space in between this queen and this knight. And so, you know, it doesn't really too much seem like, you know, there's anything for this knight to worry about. Even though it's undefended, it doesn't matter. You may or may not have noticed it. But if you guys will see in the next move or two, you know, the series of moves that I was talking about, you know, that line gets completely clear. So we have, you know, bishop to g3, knight takes, and pawn takes. And then, like I said, as you guys notice, the queen and the knight are, are now directly connected. And so this is kind of more of an obvious example, but there are definitely some combinations that will come up where it'll clear pieces uh, you know, it'll clear pieces out of the way to be able to attack another piece. So you always want to be mindful, you know, when you have uh, when you're making decisions and you have any undefended pieces, that should be definitely one of the first things you think about is, do I have any undefended pieces? Also, you want to make sure that when you're playing against somebody, you always want to notice if they have any undefended pieces or if they have any under defended pieces that you might be able to undermine the protection of like taking a pawn or knocking one of the you know, defenders out of the way. As you guys know from the, the videos that I made the past couple of days, there were definitely some situations where you could have removed the defender and won that piece. All right. So if we just actually get into what was actually played G3. All right. So a queen backs up to H5, just trying to double attack that pawn there. So we have uh, castles. All right, so we have g5. Okay, so we're definitely not liking that bishop in that spot. Um, the only kind of problem is you can't too much move it, you know, because, uh, you know, it's, it's the only thing that's protecting that, that pawn there. All right, so we have uh, c takes d5. And if you guys notice, now the knight is under defended uh, on e4 because, you know, it has this bishop and it has the knight attacking it. And, you know, there's no more pin on this diagonal anymore as far as the king because, you know, the king has moved. So you definitely want to be making sure you're paying attention to stuff like that, too. Like when, you know, castles are done or, you know, a king moves or, you know, a more important piece moves from, you know, uh, you know, it, we, we like to call breaking the pin. You know, you always have to try to be mindful of, uh, you know, when somebody breaks a pin. I remember I was playing a game with a friend of mine a couple years ago and uh, I forgot that. And so I dropped my queen. And so, you know, that's not very convenient when you're playing and you drop your queen. It's kind of hard to win, you know, after you've done that. Um all right, moving on here. All right, so we have a uh, bishop take c3, just resolving the tension that you know we have in the in the center of the board. You know, taking a piece here. All right, so we have c takes uh um b takes c3. Sorry guys. All right, so we have uh e takes d5. All right, so we have uh, bishop takes e4. Pawn takes e4. And we have e6, a little uh, little uh, zwitsch and zug in between or move. Now, something I want you guys to be paying attention to, too, as far as this one goes, is... Uh, all right. We get to this position here. Now, what we saw in the game, we just saw e takes e takes d5, right? But um, some of you guys might have been thinking, like, wait a minute. Like, the bishop is right there. Like, why wouldn't I just take the bishop? That's actually an alternate variation that you can actually go into, too. And... 
when you'll see a little bit later on the position that we get to, it's not too dissimilar from the position that we get to now. So just like a sample variation we might go into. So we'll have pawn takes here. And so we'll go ahead and snap this uh, this knight off. And so, you know, we've, we've restored uh, we've, we've uh, restored material equality. And so, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and just take here with the knight and, uh, you know, pop this uh, pop this knight off the board with, uh, you know, D takes E6. You know, setting up any, you know, setting up a possible like, you know, kind of take here, you know, get, just grab a little bit of material. So, you know, most logically we'd see, you know, a move like this, you know, threatening checkmate in one. And so, you know, that's kind of a, it's kind of a rough, uh, it's kind of a rough situation when you have a checkmate in one threat possibly on the board. Uh, so we would just probably just, you know, back knight up here. And uh, so we have, you know, we'll have bishop takes B6, you know, queen d2, just attacking this pawn here. Probably have something like, you know, pawn takes uh, g3 and f takes d3. So I want you guys to remember this position. Um, now, I mean, the structure and, uh, you know, where the pieces are and stuff like that, because it's going to be important in a minute here. But we'll just kind of go back to where we were before. All right. And then we have the pawn. Okay. Bishop takes e4, pawn takes e4. All right, throwing that throwing that pawn up there to e6. All right, so now we take the bishop on the on uh, f4 with uh, g takes f4. All right, naturally you're gonna want to take another piece. So we have a uh, pawn takes d7, bishop takes d7, queen takes e4, and so you know now in this position we have to resolve the tension right there on the f4 square. So we have f takes g3. All right, f takes g3, and now this is the position I want you guys to think about. Now, you remember before when I had the position, I'll kind of just go back and forth between the positions. Remember this position, remember the pawn structure, and then remember the position that I had before. Pretty similar. You're basically just having one extra piece in this position. So um, for those of you out there that were kind of thinking about that, that was definitely an alternate variation that you could have went into. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, poorer than the one that we actually went into. Uh, it's just a slight difference in the piece, the pieces and stuff like that. So if you did think about that as an alternate variation, good job. Uh, you know, you weren't you weren't off base. You, you were thinking like these, you know, U.S. and world champions and stuff like that. All right. So we have B6 just uh, resolving that, uh, you know, that uh, under defended uh, well, non defended uh, pawn on B7. All right. So we have knight to F5, rook A to E8. Like I said before, guys, you always want to make sure you talk about which one it was. Rook A to uh, E8. All right, so we have queen to D5. And something I want you to notice here, if you listened to me about three, four minutes ago, I was talking about undefended pieces. So as black, you have an undefended piece on D7 with the bishop. You also have an undefended queen on H5. And the undefended queen is a thing I really want you to pay attention to. Because, uh, you know, we have a possibility. Let's say black is like, hey, man, I'm I'm being careless. Like, I don't really even care about nothing. Like, you know, let me just uh, fix the camera here. There we go. Okay, cool. I'm clear. All right. Let's just say they're like, okay, you know, hey, I'm just going to back the bishop up. Like, that's, you know, that's good because the bishop is attacked. Like, we're good. I'm going to go ahead and just do that, right? Yeah, that actually fails uh, because, like I said, the queen is undefended. It's on the same rank as the other queen. And so you actually have this move here. Knight takes e7. Check. And so now you see the problem of the queen being undefended. You know, you give up the, the knight. You know, you're going to have to take something like that. Or, I mean, you can move the king over. Either way, you're going to be losing the queen. So, like I said, guys, when you're playing and you have your pieces out, you always want to make sure that you have all your pieces defended, working together. Uh, and you always want to make sure that you're paying attention when your opponent uh, has pieces out on the board that are undefended as well. All right, so going back to where we at a second ago, rook A to E8, queen to D5. And so, you know, um, and so Nakamura just says, hey, I don't want any of that discovery stuff. I'm going to just trade the knight off. It's pesky. There's too many jump possibilities. You know, and those are things a little hard to calculate sometimes. And so, you know, we had bishop takes F5, rook takes F5, queen to E2, just trying to get in, trying to get in white's kitchen. White says, I don't I, I don't want you to be in my kitchen. Like I'm about to move rook, uh rook A to F1. It gets a little tricky when the rooks like, you know, they kind of move into different, you know, different spots. Um, all right, so we have queen to queen to e3 check. Uh we have rook uh one to f2, queen e1 check, and you know, of course, there's you can move the rook back down, re repeat the position, or you can move king to g2, which is what he does, king to g2. 
All right, so we move queen, queen back to e4 with check. And now something I think is very interesting, guys, is that Wesley So and Hikaru Nakamura actually played this same exact game up to this point two years ago at St. Louis Chess Club. Uh, and so they're literally going down the same exact lines and variations that they did before. Now, two years ago, king to h3 was played. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what you know he plays today. So we have queen takes e4. So he just decides that he's going to go ahead and you know trade and you know um so a slight variation so that's why you haven't heard me say we're in a you know completely new game it's a novelty because there haven't been anything it hasn't been anything yet um and so we have rook takes e4 and we have rook to g5 check now as you guys can see uh the, the king is checked along this file here and there's only one option that it can do it's king to h8 right it's you know uh so we have rook back to f5, just double attacking this pawn here. And uh, it really wouldn't matter what you do, what you would do with the pawn. I mean, whether you leave it there or push it forward, uh, it would be gone. So one of the only moves is king to g8. Uh, you can also go king here, but, uh, you know, that just, that's the same type of situation, you know. So. Both, both moves protect the pawn, but, you know, it's going to end up in, you know, repeating the position and stuff. So, now let me back that up. Damn, there we go. Okay, so we have rook to g5 check, repeating the previous position that we had before. We have king to h8, rook back to f5, and we have king back to g8. And it is in this position uh, that we have a draw by threefold repetition. So, that means that Wesley So is the... New 2020 U.S. Champion. Good job, good job, Wesley. So you played, you played a very well. You played a very good tournament. Um, won won all his games and drew two, and so I believe he's ten. He he was ten out of, ten out of eleven, uh, which is the same score that Bobby Fischer had. If you guys remember me the other day talking about, you know, he trying to be like Bobby Fischer, he ended up being like Bobby Fischer, which you know is not too bad of a name to be in company with. You know, when you play chess. Right. Um, so that is the game. And guys, that is the U.S. championships. Pretty much. Uh, I might possibly get on here and, you know, talk about another game or two if I get a little bit of time. Um, if you guys uh, if you guys want, I'll, I'll, I'll do another couple of games from the U.S. championships. Um, I'll just see what you guys have to say. Um, but go ahead and subscribe and, and, and like for me, guys, or even dislike. You know, maybe I'm not some people's cup of tea. Um, but I am doing my best. I'm trying to, you know, give you guys the best coverage and, you know, the best, you know, variations and lines and I'm trying to be entertaining. And, you know, I've come up with doing like something little funny at the beginning and stuff like that. Maybe you guys get a kick out of it. I don't know. You know, I'm just throwing stuff out there. Let me know what you guys think about everything. But, uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching the video. Uh, and I hope you guys got something out of it. I hope you guys are entertained. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. I appreciate it.